One of the most colorful and historic traditions in all of college sports, an event that touches the lives of millions around the world, begins with the Army pregame march on. something that I mean the greats the doc Pete Dawkins and Doc Lancher and Glenn Davis have done before you and uh, all you see walking out there is just that image and uh, you know you're playing in one of the nation's biggest rivalries Since 1984, when Jim Young installed the wishbone, the cadets' rushing attack has never failed to finish among the top five in all of college football. For the fourth Navy game in a row, this offense produced no turnovers, just the precision of a cadet attack that dared an opponent to try and stop it. Sixteen plays, six and a half minutes, and Army's machine-like offense grabbed the lead in the second period. Before the end of this game, Mike Mayweather would become only the seventh Army runner to gain over a thousand yards in a season, and the first sophomore ever to do it. For both squads, this Army-Navy clash was a tough, no-holds-barred football game. When Keith Walker hit a pair of field goals, tying the school record with 15 for the season, Army edged ahead 13-9 after three tightly played periods. On defense, the cadets stymied Navy's option attack from sideline to sideline. With veterans like Pat Davey and Mike Thorson patrolling the outside, and Huff, Cooney, and Haynes clogging the middle, the middies found themselves like a battleship with no cannons, powerless against one of the finest bad-to-the-bone defenses in cadet history. Backed by Army's 12th man, the Corps of Cadets, Jim Young's offense showed another sellout crowd in the national CBS TV audience their discipline blocking and running an attack that set an academy record for the most rushing yards gained in a season. In the game's final moments, this ball control offense teased the middies with a pass to tight end Doug Baker, and then simply and methodically rammed the ball into the end zone. When Brian McWilliams dove through the middies for the clincher, Army celebrated its third win in a row over Navy. The last time that happened was in the mid-1940s. For the third time in the past five years, the proud cadets returned the Commander-in-Chief's trophy to West Point. College football's greatest rivalry had been settled, giving Army its ninth victory of 1988. No academy team in history ever won more. Army's season was a rousing success. In a locker room filled with the pride of victory, this young team that had matured quickly savored its sweetest triumph. The entire 1988 season had proved that hard work and determination could bring success, and Jim Young knew these future leaders had attained their goals. 
and yes, dared to win, and would proudly take their place with the great teams in Army football history. I'm proud of the effort that you put forth all year long. You accomplished all the goals you set out to accomplish, and uh, the big one was today, three straight over Navy. That doesn't come very often. Uh, yeah. And that, that's something that you'll all be proud of, in, uh, every class, because every class had a hand in that. Got to be four. And, and uh, the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. This means that we've won this thing three out of the last five years. We beat the Navy four out of five. We beat the Air Force three out of five. And I think that sort of brings it down to uh, we're the best. Uh, right.